come on, Anna, come join me out here. My wife and I were hiding in the back. You know what? I almost asked you guys to scoot forward because it's 4th of July week and people travel, but I'm not going to do that. You know, some of you like having your own road to yourself, and that's fine. We're not, and I was like, you need to make everybody move. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Come on up here, guys. So the uh, Cantrells are coming up. And where's Audrea's family as well? Audrea, where's your family at? Audrea McKinley, where's your family? Come on up here, Audrea. And then we're going to have a contest for best outfit. So Hannah, you can come right here, Hannah. With mom and dad, that would be great. You look so pretty. How are you? Are you good? You guys match. I know. You match. And then Audrea right up here. You guys are the center of attention. You know, very different styles, but both beautiful and amazing. So I have to ask, and we always ask this, so is this outfit number one or number two or... Number one, yes, outfit number one, way to go. Outfit number one. My oldest daughter, Julia, was notorious for multiple outfits on big event days. She loved to just get us in the closet. So, well, good morning, guys. So here's what we're gonna do. So I know, Hannah, I know you wanna know. You're staring at me. Here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna pray for your dad, okay, first, both dads. And then we're going to pray for your mom, all right? And we're also going to pray for Audrea's mommy at the same time, right? Does that sound good? We're going to pray for your mommy too. And then we're going to pray for you too. And the reason we're praying for you guys this morning is because you belong to Jesus, right? Do you know that in the Bible, you could actually probably get baptized at this point? You know, a lot of faiths, uh, Christian uh, belief systems do that. And actually, there's quite a few instances in the scripture in the New Testament and the early church where babies got baptized. We're part of a tradition where we wait until they're a bit older till they can profess their own faith before they get baptized. So we do something called dedication. Jesus himself was dedicated in the temple. And what we're in a sense saying this morning is that you guys belong to Jesus. And that these two people in your life, your parents, are representing Jesus in your lives, and they're stewards of you as long as you're in their care, which really is forever. They're stewards of your lives. So they're going to represent Christ as best they can, and you're going to represent Christ by obeying your parents and listening to them as they follow Jesus. But basically, the big message this morning is you belong to God. He has a plan for your life, and we as parents accept our role as stewards and guides under God's authority. So that's what we're going to affirm this morning. Sound good? She's excited about it. Are you excited about it? Yeah, you're more contemplative. That's good. You're more like me. So can we have you guys, let's do this. Um, can we have both sets of parents and children like right there in the middle? And we'll come behind you. And then we've got grandparents and family and all of that. So you guys can kind of stand right back here. Just give me a little bit of room to pray. And we're going to pray. Does that sound good? So everybody in the, in the congregation, would you stretch out your hands toward these families? So Thomas and Alicia over here, the Cantrells, we're going to pray for them, and baby Hannah. And then we have Isaac and Sarah over here, and we're going to pray over Isaac and Sarah. So let's do that. Let's lift up the men first. God, I know what it means to be a dad, but Lord, I'm so grateful that you have a much better understanding of that. You know what it means to be a father. Lord, you know what it means to care for your children. So I lift up Thomas and I lift up Isaac to you this morning. Lord, they need new resources and new strength that they've never had before. Whether it's adding a child, whether it's a first time parent, they need your Holy Spirit in new and fresh ways more than they ever have. Lord, I pray for them as they relate to their children, that as their daughters and sons look to them, that they would know they are loved and that they matter, that they have a place in this world, that there's a purpose to their lives. That they're not here by accident, just like Isaac's not, just like Thomas isn't. They're here for a reason. Bless them and encourage them as dads. And Lord, we lift up the moms to you this morning. We pray over them in Jesus' strong name. They have unique relationships with their children. They have this innate ability to see the hearts of their children. 
And Lord, I pray that as they grow in their relationship with their sons and daughters, Lord God, that they would know they are loved no matter what. And though their words may have to oppose them at times, their hearts never, ever will. That they're loved unconditionally, just like you love us, Father. Bless these parents, Lord. Encourage them. In your name we pray. And now let's lift up these little ones. Audrea and Hannah. You guys are amazing and beautiful and daughters of Jesus. So let's pray. Lord, we lift up these two to you. We lift up Hannah. We thank you for her. Amazing young woman. And we lift up Audrea. We thank you for her. A beautiful woman of God. Yes, Lord. Lord, we pray this morning that you would cover them in your grace. Shield them from the evil one. Let no unnecessary harm come to them. Lord, I pray that they would grow to trust their parents. Though they are not perfect people, they are God's representatives in their lives. I pray for incredible relationships with their parents, lifelong friendship and union with their families. Lord, I pray for provision for them. I pray for the doors that you want open to open and doors you want shut to shut. Lord, I pray they would hear from you at an early age that they belong to you and that you have a plan for their life. That they're not just one in a sea of children, that they have a unique purpose and plan. May it be so, Lord, in your name we pray. And we dedicate them to you this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. They did great. They did so great. So great. So we have some gifts for the children. Do you want to hold that for your little sissy? Awesome. Way to go. Can we give them a hand again as they sit down, guys? Way to go, Isaac. Way to go, man. Good job, Thomas. Good job, buddy. Way to go, guys. Did he know he was going to be on stage this morning? Oh, but he did a good job. All right, everybody. Here we go. It's Sunday, but it's a fifth Sunday. You know what that means. We get to hang out and eat together, right? So important to us on fifth Sundays are uh, baby dedications, but also water baptisms. And we're going to do some water baptisms this morning. And I think right now we have one right now, two. Okay, at least two. We'll see if any more come. That's great. Can I just talk a little bit about water baptism this morning, just for a second? I just have three words I want to share about water baptism in case you're confused about it. And some of you may be new to the church, new to faith, or maybe you grew up in a particular tradition with uh, regards to water baptism. But I just want to give you what we believe according to the scriptures about water baptism. And so I got three S words for you. All right. The first one is sacrament. That a sacrament is something that is holy and set apart by God for his particular purposes, right? So it means sacred, set apart from ordinary things for a special godly purpose. Jesus actually commanded this to his disciples after his resurrection. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's in Matthew 28. So today when we baptize these young men, we're going to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus commanded. The early church immediately picked this up. I mean, right away, within the first few years, we know the early church was baptizing um, men, women, and children even at an at a right at the dawn of the early church. So this was something that was accepted. It was essential. It was part of the body of Christ. And it has been a sacrament or tradition for thousands of years since. The second S word I want to give you is sign, sign. So water baptism is not salvation, okay? Those are separate things. It is not salvific in a sense. You don't become a Christian by being water baptized. But what it is is a sign of what God has already done in the person. So we know that we're saved by God's grace through faith. We're not saved through water baptism. An example of this would be the thief on the cross, right? Where he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And that thief on the cross was never baptized. So I like to think of it this way. Just like in marriage, the ring is a sign of a covenant that's taken place between the man and the woman. So water baptism is a sign of the covenant that has taken place between us and the Lord. Now, we know that word covenant, the old covenant, was with Abraham, and that was the people of God being set apart, and the sign for that was circumcision of the males. 
But the new covenant that Jesus instituted through his blood, the new relationship, the new agreement, the sign of the new covenant is water baptism. Baptism replaced circumcision, and we see in Colossians 2, 11, and 12, it occurs for both males and females. Galatians 3, 29 says that we are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So just like the old covenant where we, where we were, where Abraham and the people of God were set apart, we're now Abraham's offspring as the new church, the new Israel, and the sign of that covenant is water baptism. And then finally, it demonstrates, under that sign, it demonstrates forgiveness. Water baptism is a beautiful picture of the forgiveness that's taken place in our hearts with the Lord. Repent and be baptized, it says in Acts 2. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. He's talking about forgiveness here associated with baptism. And what we know that as we are forgiven, we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Our sins are washed away. And then symbolically this morning, as Tyler and others go under the water, this water is going to wash over them as a sign, and they come out. And it's this sort of affirmation or representation of the forgiveness that's taken place. And the last S I have for you, and you had to be three, right, is it's a seal. It's a seal. What do I mean? Well, they're not only signs, these sacraments, but they're also seals. It means they actually bring blessings to us. Now, how is somebody blessed through water baptism? Well, it's our faith that's blessed. It's our faith in the Lord. So we know this just by watching water baptism that our faith is blessed. But the person who's being water baptized, their faith is encouraged and strengthened through water baptism. They, these signs assure us and stir up our faith, and it's our faith that receives the blessings. One of the ways it does this is it demonstrates our union with Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, it says, when you're baptized in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, all of, uh, all of who we are are represented in Jesus Christ now. All of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ, it says in Galatians 3. So we're putting on the very nature of Jesus Christ by being water baptized. And the last thought under this is we share in his death. In Romans 6, 3, and 4, it says, Do you know that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we've been buried with him in baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. So we're dying to our old self, and we're being raised alive in him. So it's a sacrament, it's a sign, and it's a seal. And our faith is encouraged this morning as we watch others be baptized. So why don't we have Tyler come down? And I'll just share this with you this morning as Tyler is getting ready. So one of the ways our faith is encouraged is by watching people get water baptized. But the other part of it is, too, is seeing what God's actually doing in their lives. Some of you in the room have been Christians for a really long time. And there are things in life that get you excited, like the Seahawks or the Mariners in a playoff pennant chase or whatever it would be. But when you sit with somebody who's come to faith in Christ recently or come back to faith in Christ, and have had hardships along the way, have suffered along the way, have made poor decisions along the way. I mean, Tyler's story reminds me so much of mine, it's not even funny, except I wasn't cool enough to be in the Navy like you were. But to see him say yes to the Lord and to see God begin his transformative work in him. And it's, Tyler said this morning, he goes, I can't, I'm going to paraphrase for you, Tyler, but I can't point to the invisible hand that's on me, that's been guiding me, but I can't not deny it either. Like it's been there. God's hand's been on me. And in that, in that act of God guiding and shepherding him, he's gone through some really difficult seasons, but he's also seen God spare him from things that would have either ended his life or devastated him forever. And now he's here. And so this is much more than just a ceremony. This is a culmination of what God is currently doing in Tyler's life. This is the step of baptism. So we pray this over you this morning, Tyler, that you would receive this sign 
the sign of water baptism, that you're a child of God and you belong to the community of faith, a seal that your faith is being strengthened and increased in him. And it's a sacrament. This is something Jesus said to go and do, and you're being obedient and following him in the, st in the state of baptism. So I know uh, you've got some questions for him, Trey. Yeah. All right, yeah. why don't you ask those and we'll baptize Tyler. Yeah, we just have a few questions. This is a moment that we, we prayed for and that we sought after, so this is special. Um, you know, I, was, I had the wrong shirt on, if you didn't notice that, so I had to go get a new shirt. Um, but as I was putting it on, I was like, oh, like made new. And I got emotional um, because there was a moment that we had a conversation and you're like, I feel different and I feel new. And so this is a moment where you now get to walk in that daily. This solidifies that and cements that. So a few questions for you before we go to this moment. Do you, Tyler, believe Jesus is the Son of God? I do. And have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? I have. Okay, we're going to baptize you. It's good. He passed, guys. He passed. <laughs> Good job, Tyler. And is Antonio up there too? Just Tyler? All right, we had one more. Okay, so I'll say this to you in the congregation. If you're here this morning and you just heard everything I said about water baptism, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ this morning and you've not yet been water baptized, it's better to go home wet and obedient than dry and disobedient. So if you're here this morning and you want to get water baptized, we have got the water all ready to go for you. And if that's you this morning, just jump up right now, come down and see Danielle. We've got some clothes for you to change into, and we'll get you water baptized right now. So I'm going to count to 10, and if nobody jumps up, then I'm going to dismiss us here in just a second through a song. All right? Anybody? Oh, you're going to get baptized? All right, let's go. Let's go, Haley. You can lead worship and then get water baptized after you lead worship. That's how we roll. All right, Haley's going to get changed. If anybody else wants to get water baptized this morning, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, but you have not taken that step of obedience yet, then come on down and we'll get you water baptized. We'll do it. That's why we're here. This is what church is this morning. There's no other agenda. Dedicating our children, baptizing the followers of Jesus, and then we're going to celebrate all this together by eating together afterwards. Yeah. So this is the agenda this morning. Yeah. This is the service. So if that's you, we're here for you. We're here for you. Philip, why don't you lead us in that chorus while we wait? All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life 
So Haley, I have a question for you, okay? And you're gonna you're gonna have to use the mic to answer this for me. So, just like oh, Tyler, when he was baptized earlier, right? So he was raised in a Christian home, and then walked away from the Lord for a long time, and then has come back to faith now at the age of I think he's 26. He said, right after years of not following the Lord. So I remember when you were baptized as a child, right? But now you're moving into adulthood, right? Moving into adulthood. And you just jumped up. So we didn't stop any of that. We're like, absolutely. We want you to be obedient to the Lord. So can you just tell us this morning, like, what is prompting you to get baptized right now as an adult? I've been, so I was baptized in mm -hmm. fourth grade. And I kind of fell away from the Lord for a long time. But recently, it's been like, I've been feeling like I need to get baptized again. And so. You know, when I was 24 and I came back to faith in Christ, right, through this miracle that God did in my life, I'd walked away for a number of years, and I was baptized as a baby, you know, christened, basically, and I have the pictures and everything, I had a little white shirt on and all the stuff, and the priest baptized me, but I knew at 24, like, I needed to do this for myself, and so I had my brother actually walk me out into Lake Stevens in the middle of the night with a Bible in a Ziploc bag and a flashlight and baptized me in Lake Stevens because I was like, I got to do it. I got to be obedient. So we want to be faithful to what God's saying to you now that you're moving into adulthood. If you're like, I've walked away and I'm coming back and I want a fresh start with him. So we want to honor that this morning. Okay. So you're, you're, this is a symbol of the forgiveness that's taken place, that you belong to the Lord, that he's doing a new work in you as a grown up. And so we affirm all of those things this morning as you get water baptized. Okay. All right. Here we go. Haley, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. And have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Let's baptize you. So we could probably argue all day about the theology of that water baptism, right? Because she was baptized when she was younger. Did she need to get baptized again? No, she didn't need to. But if my daughter, as a, as a you know, young adult, said she wanted to get baptized again, I would absolutely do it as a young adult because she's in a lot of ways a different person. Um, so if I'm that way as an earthly father, like how much more would a heavenly father be like, oh, you want to be obedient? Yeah, go ahead and do that in obedience to me. Follow what I'm telling you in the Holy Spirit. So we just want to affirm that. We want to err on the side of that affirmation of faith. So, all right, guys. I see we go grab some food together. So I'm sure the grill is started. I'm sure the hot dogs are going. That's all I care about right now is a hot dog. And then we've got some prizes over there. We're going to give away some fun stuff. There'll be lots of treats and things. So let's stand together. Can I pray for us as we head next door to the lodge and participate in a meal together? So, Lord, we love you. We say thank you for this morning. We thank you for Hannah. Oh. Lord, we thank you for these beautiful girls, Hannah and Audrea, Lord, as they're dedicated to you. We thank you for these water baptisms. Bless them, Lord. Cover them in your grace. Shield them and guide them. And, Lord, now I, I pray for this time of fellowship. This isn't just food. This is the body of Christ encouraging each other. This is the body of Christ strengthening each other. We need each other as we need you. So Lord, work in us as we share this time of joy and celebration together. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll see you next door, guys, in a few minutes.